How's it going, Jose? You just, you know, got a briefcase? Uh, almost a briefcase. My wife got me something pretty good, so I, I feel so weird but comfortable at the same time coming to work. Yeah, man. So for those that don't know, <laughs> uh, obviously they know you as a, a Raptors legend, uh, but now you're a special assistant to the NBPA, uh, the executive director, Michelle Roberts. And yeah, how'd that, how'd that come about, man? Because you're a busy guy. I know that you have your own charity. You serve as a UNICEF ambassador. You are... Uh, it currently in the Harvard Business School's crossover in a business program for professional athletes. This se- feels like a lot on on your plate just as you're starting retirement. Yes, uh, yes, uh, but I think one of the the, the, the things that convinced me is the flexibility. They give me the flexibility to to come to the office, to uh, to still enjoy my family and do my other stuff. So I'm coming to the meetings. I try to help as much as I can, and they always need it. Uh, player boys here on a daily basis. Uh, they want me to create this role for uh, for other players in the future. So that's why it was like, okay, that's something really interesting for me. And I was living in New York, so I'm just one stop from a, on a subway to to get to the office. So it's been great so far. Uh, I'm I'm I always like to have the stuff to to do. I'm always my mind is always uh, working on something else. So it's been it's been great so far, and that's what convinced me to 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 come here. Yeah, and you're still a young man in real life terms, right? Like 38 is not old. You shouldn't be retired. Um, so I get that <laughs> entirely. Uh, have you st- started missing the game at all? Like, w- w- this is your first time. Like, you're going through the beginning stages of a season, and you're you're not getting ready to lace them up. Like, what is that feeling like? Look, it's been great so far because it's something I've been preparing for a long time. It's not something like it took me out of surprise, like, oh, I don't have any team now. What are I going to do next? Mm-hmm. I think I've been, I've been getting ready for this. I think uh, it kind of like, uh, uh, like accelerate the process because of the offer of this job. I was uh, still talking with a couple of teams about the possibility to join them uh, for this season, but it was going to be a role where I wasn't going to play a lot. I was going to be that third point guard trying to mentor somebody, some, some guy. Um, I'm too competitive. Um, and I don't know if I, you know, get in December, I was going to be working out a lot, uh, helping those guys, maybe losing a lot of games. And I don't know if I was going to be happy with the decision of playing one more year or if that year is going to add a lot to my career just because to play one more. So when that, this offer came, I talked to Michelle. I thought it was something... Kind of like a fit everything I was looking for and check all the boxes about being able to enjoy my family without being able to uh, stay connected with basketball and learning from every, you know, kind of like a department on the other side of basketball. So um, so that's why it's kind of like accelerate. So I don't miss it so far. I went to see a game the other night with the Knicks and uh, the Celtics. It was opening night. I went with my son. I was sitting there and I actually was happy. I was enjoying with my son watching a basketball game. Um, without thinking I have to practice tomorrow. So it's been good so far. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's really cool. And you, you mentioned that when you came to Toronto and you know you went and watched the Raptors play in the postseason, that you were with your son as well. And I imagine that it's really nice for the two of you to just be able to share watching a basketball game together. People probably wouldn't be able to get that. But yeah, that's your sport. And you would have probably never had that opportunity before. And now you actually get to do it. And you, know, you mentioned not wanting to be a third point guard, that you're too competitive for that now. But clearly... Uh, part of that role is they think that you're probably still capable in a pinch to step in and 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 be a, a you know still an NBA player, but also that they value you as a veteran and someone that could probably teach young players and a mind that front offices and coaching staffs respect. And I've read reports that you have turned down some front office jobs. Like how many opportunities were there for you to not just be a player, but also someone that maybe stepped into a front office or a coaching staff? Yeah, it was a couple of them, uh, coaching staff as well. People always ask and say, what what am I going to do next year? But at the same time, as a player, and yes, I value that a lot, and I know the, the coaches want me to be there. And just, and I, I feel I feel great. Like I, I think I can help one of those teams if they need me to to play. I'm still you know fit and in shape for NBA. I was working out until last week uh, to get ready for that. But uh, same thing with the, the front office. Like I didn't want to commit to something that I don't know if I'm going to like it. I don't want to say yes to somebody and go there and start working in the front office and in December say, okay, man, yeah, I can't, I don't like this or I'm not, you know, uh, so I preferred something to, I wanted to learn first. Uh, I think this job gave me the opportunity to be able to talk to 
to people, to to see a little bit one year from the outside, to to get to basketball operations and see how things work. And after maybe make a decision like, hey, okay, I think this I like this. I can go now to to this team and be there and work for you guys and be helpful and not just being there because because I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna like it. So that's that's what why I said no to those. And um, it was a couple of opportunities. And uh, I think uh, if I commit to something, I wanted to make sure I'm gonna help those guys. I'm gonna be able to be part of something. I'm interested and I really enjoyed it. I don't want to just go there and and see what happens. Yeah, and I don't mean to sound like one of your parents or maybe one of my parents where something exciting happens for me and they're like, yeah, yeah, what's next? You know, because you just did get this new job (laughs) and you have this. And so we're already asking you, yeah, okay, sure. You got the MBPA job. What are you going to do after? Uh, What's the real job? But are you more interested in being a coach moving forward or, or someone that would be in a front office? Like, is there either of those two things that when you were offered that you thought, you know, that if I want to stay connected to the game, it's probably still going to be in some in a, in a different capacity like that. I think it won't be, it won't be a coach just because of timing. I think it's uh, the same traveling in the same. It's being in the first one in the gym, leaving the last one. And if I kind of like get away from basketball a little bit, it's just because I wanted to spend more time with my kids. Mm-hmm. So that's why it won't be a coach. Um, I think a front office job, could be a little bit more uh, uh, near of what I'm looking for, uh, but but at the same time I'm not gonna close any doors. And like I don't know, I maybe uh, end up doing something that has nothing to do with basketball. That's why I'm gonna be open to meeting with people. That's the flexibility they give me. I can you know uh, who knows. Uh, I'm gonna try to learn, meet people, uh, and see what's next. It's something I'm not in a rush to to try to get to something that was the. I was lucky enough to play for a long time and be able to to have a little bit time to to make the next decision, and that's what I will be doing. Uh, talking about Jose Calderon, he's a Raptors legend, and he's now assistant, uh, special assistant. Yeah, there's uh, those assistants, but that's not you. You're a special assistant to the oh, NBA PA executive Sox, director. Yeah. Socks for the person that accepted different. just a, the assistant position, and yeah. then you come in as the special, special. assistant. And like, oof, tough. Yeah. Yeah. you they just have a glow to you. Do you have a coffee cup that says special assistant on, or just like as that? Yeah, I, should, be... I think I should get one. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So congrats on, on the new gig, and I know, yeah, it's it's like immediately after you're done your playing career, so. Maybe you haven't had too much time to, to really look back and reflect, but Sportsnet had a, a poll, and uh, you were ranked as the sixth greatest Raptor of all time. So many great moments here uh, with this organization. When you look back on, on your time in the NBA as a player, like what sticks out to you? What do you think about most fondly? I think it was everything. Uh, so many good moments, man. I, I remember my NBA debut. I remember when we uh, get to the playoffs, uh, uh, I remember the the good times, the no good times when we were losing too many games and trying to to rebuild that team. Uh, I went through everything, uh, but the best thing for me was like from day one, uh, everybody in Toronto took me like uh, that was my house. Uh, it's, it's actually the place I I live the most after where I'm from, <laughs> so it's my second home. Uh, so I feel always loved. So there's so many times I make so many friends there, and uh, it's tough to just. Uh, pinpoint one one uh, specific uh, thing that happened. Did you find it easier to train? I mean, I know it's a matter of perspective, and this is the only one you know, but how helpful was it that you were coming from Spain to a city like Toronto that was as international and as diverse as it is? Well, uh, even with my accent still now, I think the best part was they accepted me when I have no idea of English. And I was trying to do those interviews as like nothing happened, but I knew nobody was understanding what I was saying. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, they, 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 you know, it's a multicultural city. It helped me a lot. I think being uh, people from everywhere there in Toronto, everybody was uh, okay with me, maybe uh, with my language barrier, or they understood where I came from, uh, a different kind of culture. So it helped me a lot. I think it was great for, uh, I was lucky to get to Toronto right away. And um, uh, yeah, me and my family felt, felt really well since, since day one. Man, it's, uh, it, I don't know if it's worse when you feel like you aren't being understood or if you're on the other side of it when you're someone and you're really trying in earnest to listen to someone speak English to you. Because man, I, can, I don't speak any languages. Like it's very, very hard. I can't imagine trying to do it. 
Uh, but when you do the, I don't really understand, but you smile and nod and laugh, yeah. I'm always so terrified yeah. that someone didn't say something actually funny at all. And then they look <laughs> yeah. at you when yeah, you know yeah, they laughing. did it. I'm saying something serious <laughs> yeah, yeah. here. Yeah. This is, uh, I, I was in the locker room those first months. I'm going to say months. I don't want to say a year. But uh, when guys were laughing, I, I wasn't sure if they were laughing with me, about me. I don't know what they were talking about. They laugh, I laugh. I have no idea what was going on in that locker room for a long period of time. So it could be them making fun of me, and I was laughing too. So I have no idea. It was great. Uh, it was a great time, but it was tough for me. I was getting home with headaches, trying oh. to understand what they were saying, trying to translate. And after thinking about what I want to say next, because I needed to speak Spanish to myself, translate to English, this is what I want to say. It was so difficult for me those first uh, few months uh, uh, there in Toronto. No, I can't imagine. And beyond that, like, you're learning the language, you're not fully comfortable in it, and then you have to go in front of, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on camera and mm. try and speak it. Like, how terrifying would that have been? You know, the good thing is I didn't care. I was okay with my English. I was out there. I was talking about the way I thought I should, English should be talked at that moment. That's all I knew. And I was always trying to look for, a, a, you know, a words to make it up for it. So uh, I was okay. And after maybe I realized and guys were making fun of, like, instead of, like, teammates, I'd say friends. Or I said, you know, I was always make up stuff just to to make people understand what I wanted to say. So it was okay for me. I, I didn't really care of what people were thinking. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, I, I guess they, they understood, and that's why I felt comfortable about it. I've never really considered that until now, after Ben just said that, but everyone, like, public speaking is one of people's greatest fears. Yeah. And, yeah, we just kind of take it for granted that athletes just kind of step out and, and speak in front of the public and speak in front of reporters yeah. and that that's an easy part of the job. And, yeah, it's good that... You didn't find that to be a challenge, but and yeah. about everything too, because yeah. that's the other thing. Like people think, we sometimes we have to know about everything, and, and it's tough. You you can't know about everything. There is a lot of things going on in this world. So sometimes when they ask you and you're like, I don't know, uh, maybe I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean I don't want to talk about it. Maybe I don't know <laughs> for real. Yeah. Like. Um, so it's so many moments, and that's why imagine that in English when you is not your language. So that's why sometimes uh, you know uh, things get out of uh, of your way just because of that translation. Sometimes. Hey, I, I, now that we're talking about this, do you ever feel like because you were viewed as a nice guy and a friendly guy that people maybe didn't take you as seriously? Like you just mentioned how competitive you are, that you wouldn't want to step into a third role. And I think that if you ask most basketball fans who don't know you, hey, Jose Calderon, would he be a third point guard? They'd say, of course, he'd be a great leader. He's a perfect clubhouse guy, perfect locker room guy. And yeah. now I'm thinking back to when the Raptors first acquired Kyle Lowry. How difficult was mm -hmm. that for you to, you know, start sharing that role after you'd been, yeah, man, the most successful point guard in Raptors history to that point? Yeah, no, but but the thing about not being the third one, that, that's what I've been doing the last few years, and yeah. I love that. I think a 38 now is just the... It is getting tougher because I'm not 35, I'm not 34, I'm 38. So now I'm start missing my family. So it's not that I don't want that. It's the competitive part is like, if I'm missing my kids and I'm not like winning, yeah. it's gonna be tough for me. I know in December I'm gonna be mad. So 100%, I could I could be doing the the third point guard thing forever because I love basketball and and I could help. But I, now with my kids, my family, it's kind of like you put everything in a different perspective, you know. So. So you know about uh, being the third point, and I would love to. And, and maybe if one of the big teams call me and I have the chance to, to get another run to a ring, mm -hmm. um, and we were talking about different things and talking about this is my 15th season. And um, what happened there, um, it, it was great. I always have uh, tough challenges with, with Kyle, but it was Jerry Jack before that. It was TJ Ford before that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I was the, I don't want to, like, you know, say nothing or brag about it, but I still, you know, the starting pointer. Um, and that's what happened with those guys. Uh, no, I'm, I'm joking. I got a great, uh, 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 a great relationship with Kyle. It was great. I think we we fought on the court to get those minutes. Uh, I think it was. Um, uh, I learned a lot from him. I think he learned a lot from from myself. We got a great. Uh, we were great partners on the court, and um, uh, that year, year and a half that we were playing together, it was it was a great uh, one-two punch uh, on uh, in Toronto. 
Yeah, it was. I just, I do wonder if sometimes, you just mentioned that. Like, the Raptors constantly tried to upgrade the, the point guard position while you were there. Despite, you know, you were a guy that, I, be, I know you didn't qualify because of the free throws, but you were such a good shooter that you had a, a 50-40-90 season. Like, you were the mm. one of the best free throw shooters in the NBA. You were this excellent playmaker. And yet, they did try to continuously go out and get TJ Ford. Like, they traded away Villanueva, uh, who was a big that had had a ton mm. of success in his rookie season because they still felt like they could get that position better. And there was even a point where there was that deal on the table with uh, the Charlotte Bobcats at the time, right? Yeah. Where you thought you were going there, and then they kind of had to come back. Did that kind of give you a chip on your shoulder that, you know, they were kind of trying to always upgrade that thing and that they did try to trade you that one time? You know, this is where we live. This is the business we live in. And you always try to, to improve your team. Mm-hmm. I think I never was, like, maybe a highlight kind of guy. Um, maybe a guy uh, like everybody could talk about it. I think it was, for me, it was always about the team. Um, could I be more selfish and maybe change that uh, perspective? Yeah, but it's something, it wasn't of my personality. I always went about the team first. And in those situations, yes, they always try to uh, get somebody there and improve the position. But at the end of the day, I was confident in myself and I was, I ended up playing all the time. So um, I was competing and I knew if I did my job, uh, the coach was going to put me in, uh, on the court. And uh, that was my, my, my only secret. It was about working and, and making my, my teammates uh, wanted to play with me because they were happy about me passing the ball, and that was my role. And that's why I played 14 years in the NBA. I didn't play because I could jump out of the building, or you know, it was just a great trying to adapt my game to the team I was playing for, and and just uh, you know whatever they need me to do. And and after that, I went I went to Dallas and be and I start there and play, uh, and I would have a lot of fun and and uh, everywhere. So I mean. It wasn't about uh, just that team. I think uh, they were going to be always another team who is going to want a player like myself. And you were automatic at the uh, free throw line, except for those three that you missed in 08, 09. Do you remember yeah. those three that you yeah, missed? Yeah. 151 yeah. for 154. Can you, can you no. name the three I, teams that you missed those free throws against? Look, I I, I got the first one was in a, it was a, a home. Uh, it was... Uh, Indiana, Milwaukee, and New Orleans. New Orleans wow. was the only one on the road. <laughs> uh, the other two were in, actually in Toronto. But the best part of, 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 of all of this is like the next season. Next season opening night, Cleveland Cavaliers, LeBron James and company come to the building. Brian Colangelo gave me the, the like a big, nice wood kind of like a thing with the NBA, 98% historic record the best ever and I'm like this is so nice I'm so happy I get to the line I missed my first two <laughs> freezers of the season so I started all for two <laughs> and, I, and everybody the whole building went, uh, went crazier than, than if I uh, make a, a last shot to win a game it was amazing um, it was a great run uh, but I love it it was it was fun it was really tough to do uh, missing just three but uh, you know I didn't know uh, it is. Uh, I wasn't a big like number free throw shooter, so I don't know if that is here or not. It was like one here, two there, um, and I knew I needed like 125 to qualify. Yeah. So it was a great, a great year for sure. No, it was amazing, uh, and of course you were an amazing raptor and still beloved in the city, as you know when uh, when you're here. Jose, uh, congrats on the new gig and uh, best of luck you. in your post playing career. Thanks, Thanks for this. Man. Oh, thank you guys. Anytime. Thank you very much. 